Welcome to my Premiere Pro Basics class and welcome to Film School. My name is Jason Rose. I'm going to be your instructor uh, for this class. And let me just tell you a little bit about this class before we get going. This is going to be a little different from some of the other tutorials you might watch uh, online in that I'm actually going to run this uh, like a class. I have been teaching editing for the last 15 years. I've been filmmaking uh, or pursuing filmmaking for the last 30 years. And I'm just going to run this like a class. And what's going to make this a little different aside from that is that if you want to, uh, down in the link or on my website, filmschool.com, uh, you can download, you can buy and download the media uh, that goes along with this little course. So today what we're going to cover is a simple two-person dialogue scene. And really, this is for the beginning editor. Okay, let's say you've never edited before, you're new to Premiere Pro, and you just want to kind of dip your toe in and learn a little bit about the basics of editing. This is the class for you. And just so you know, I'm going to do this uh, same class, not only for Premiere Pro, but I'm going to do a version for Avid Media Composer. I'm also going to do a version for uh, DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you're more interested in a little bit more advanced editing, uh, this might be a class you want to skip. However, I'm going to use the same media in this class that I'm going to use for future classes. Uh, so once again, if you just want to sit back and watch and see me demo this stuff, you can do that. But if you want to work along with me, uh, you can purchase the media for this class for $9.95. I'm going to put a link uh, down uh, with this video, uh, but you can also go to my website, filmschooled.com, uh, and there will be a link that you can purchase it there as well. But you don't have to. You can just sit back and watch if you'd like. That is up to you. Uh, okay, so what we're going to start with is uh, Premiere Pro. We're going to start with a simple Premiere Pro project. And my goal over the next couple of hours is to simply create a project, organize a simple project, import the media, do some basic editing, in, out, insert, overwrite, uh, maybe work with other video tracks, and then talk about how to export this simple sequence. Everything you need to know to get you from kind of A to Z in a very simple workflow. And then in other classes, we will get more advanced as we go along. We'll talk about trimming, we'll talk about titles, we'll talk about effects and things like that. But for this particular project, we're just gonna keep it super simple. So I have already launched Premiere Pro. And when you first launch Premiere Pro, this is the first page that you come to, the welcome screen. And the welcome screen is where we can create a new project, or open an existing project. Okay, so today we're just gonna create a new project. So you can either click create new project right here in the middle of the screen, or you can go up to the new project uh, button up here in the upper left corner. Uh, you could even go to the file menu and go to new project. Okay, it's the same thing either way. So I'm just gonna click new project. And then we're going to come to this screen. This is the import page of Premiere Pro. Uh, Premiere Pro tries to kind of simplify the process here where we have a, a place where we can name our project up here in the upper left corner, choose a location for our project, and if we already know where the media is that we want to bring in from the project, we can bring it right here under this import tab. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to name the project. Okay, now in this case, uh, this is a simple two-person dialogue scene. Uh, it's, I'm calling it Scene 20 because it's from an old script that I did years and years ago. Uh, so we're just going to name this project Scene 20. Whoops, if I can type Scene 20. And then we'll put dash dialogue dash dialogue, oh, still my typing is not very good tonight, dialogue. And then as far as the project location, I'm going to leave it in the default location. When you install uh, Premiere Pro or really any uh, Adobe program on your system, it's going to create an Adobe folder inside your documents folder. And then inside of that, it's gonna create a Premiere Pro folder. And then inside of that, it's gonna create a number folder based on the version of Premiere Pro that you're working on. And that's gonna be the default location where Premiere Pro wants to put your projects when you create them. 
If you want to put it somewhere else, you can click on this drop down menu, go down to choose location, and then you can point this to wherever you want to go. But once again, in this class, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to leave it at the default location. Now, if I wanted to at this time from this import tab, uh, I could go over here to the left where we have different locations on our system where we might find media. For example, the media that I have for this class is on an external drive uh, that I'm calling media 001. Okay, so over here, here are the drives that are hooked up to my system. One of them is called media 001. I can click on that and it's going to show me a folder that I have on that drive called scene 20 clips. Now, before we go any further, I'm going to hide Premiere Pro. I'm going to hit Command H, which is the keyboard shortcut. And we're going to take a look on that drive. If you do go decide to uh, purchase and download the media for this class, what you're going to end up downloading is a zip file uh, from WeTransfer, Scene 20 Clips. And when you unzip it, it's going to give you a folder called Scene 20 Clips that's full of a bunch of QuickTime movies, but there's also the script uh, for this particular scene. Okay, so that's on my system on an external drive, Media 001. So I'm going to go back to Premiere. I'm going to click on this. And so I could at this point, if I wanted to, I could just check this little box and then it would import all the media in that folder. Uh, I could also double click this folder and look, take a look at all the media that's in there. And if I wanted to, I could check the little box in the upper left corner of each of these. I could even hit Command A, which is the keyboard shortcut for select all, to select all these clips and import them as I create the project. Okay, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. We're just going to name our project. Once again, up here, upper left corner, scene 20 dialogue. Leave the project location where it is. We're not going to import anything at this point. So we're not going to check anything. We're not going to navigate anywhere. Over here in the upper right corner, there's other options for what they call organizing media, which is this going to create a bin inside our project to hold our media in. We're not going to do that. We have the option to copy our media to a different location. We're not going to do that. We have the option to create a new sequence of our media. We're not going to do that. We're not going to do any of this stuff right now. Okay, we're going to keep it super simple. We're just going to name our project, leave the default location, and we're going to go down here to the bottom right corner. We're going to click Create. And that's going to create a brand new empty project uh, inside of Premiere Pro. Okay, now that we have Premiere Pro open uh, and our new project created, we're going to start by going up here to this window menu, Workspaces, and we're just going to go to the Editing Workspace. This is your basic editing workspace. And just to make sure we're looking at this at the default settings, let's also go up to Window, Workspaces, Reset to Saved Layout, Reset to Saved Layout. And that's just going to put everything back in its default position. Now, all of these workspaces, the layout of all your windows, this is all customizable. Okay, but for this particular lesson, we're going to leave everything pretty much as is. We're not going to talk about customizing, but I will make a video on that. Now, as we look around the workspace here, there are four main panel groups. Okay, down here in the bottom left, we have the project panel group. This is where we're going to organize our project. Up here, we have our source monitor. This is where we're going to view our source clips. Over here, we have our program monitor. This is where we're going to preview our edited program or edited sequence. And then down here, we have our timeline. This is where we're going to see a graphical representation of the edit that we're making, the sequence that we're making. We also have two smaller tools. We have what's called the tool palette, which has various tools we might use throughout the editing process. And then over here, we have our audio meters. Okay, so we're going to start. We need to get media into our project so we can start editing. So if you see right here, it says right in the middle of the project panel that we can import media to start. And it's like, well, duh, of course I need to import media to start editing. But what this is really telling you is that one way to import media is to simply double click in your project panel. That will open up a finder window 
and then you can go navigate to the media that you want to import. Once again, in my case, my media is on my media drive, scene 20 clips, and then there are my QuickTime movies. And I can just select them and import them here, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay, we're gonna cancel out of this. I'm gonna show you another way to do this. Now, as I said, this window is actually a panel group, a group of panels. So across the top here, we have our project panel, we have a media browser panel, libraries, info, effects, markers, history. We're gonna click on the media browser panel to bring that to the front. And this is a way that we can go look at or browse our media before we officially import it into our project. Okay, so on the left side of the media browser, we can see the drives that are hooked up to our system and other locations on our system where we might find media. So over here, I see my media drive. So I'm gonna click on that, and then over here on the right, I'm gonna see the folders or files that are on that drive. So there's that scene 20 clips. And if I double click it, now I can see all of the QuickTime movies that are in that folder. And this is one way we can view the media in, in, uh, on our system. Okay, now I'm going to go down here to the bottom of the media browser, and there are two different views here. We have what they call list view, which simply gives us a list of those clips on the drive. And then we have what they call thumbnail view, which gives us a little preview, a little thumbnail of, of the clips here. Now I'm gonna go up to my media browser tab and there's a little menu on the right side of it. And I'm gonna turn on what's called hover scrub, hover scrub. And what that does is that allows me to just move my mouse over these clips while in thumbnail view to preview them. Okay, this is just one kind of quick way to preview a clip. Now, if I want to make these thumbnails, these pictures a little larger, at the bottom of the media browser, there's a slider here that I can drag to the right to make those larger. And then once again, I can simply just drag my mouse over to scrub through the clip. But we can also do this. I can click on the clip to select it and then hit my space bar on my keyboard to play through the clip. Lunch break. Just a minute. No, now. And you'll see that this way, not only can we play through the clip, but we can hear the audio, which we cannot hear in uh, with Hover Scrub. You'll notice that the, at the bottom of the clip, there's a blue bar with a black handle. That black handle is your playhead. And you can grab that and drag back and forth, forth to scrub through the clip that way. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to import all of these clips. I want to import all of these clips. So I'm going to hit Command A on my keyboard, Control A on a window system, Command A on my keyboard to select all the clips. Now, as I said, there are many different ways that we can select clips and that we can import clips, but we're gonna keep it simple uh, for this class. We're gonna hit Command A to select all, and then we can either go up to File, Import from Media Browser, or we can right click on any of the selected clips and choose Import. Right click, Import. And that's gonna import all of the clips into your project panel. So you'll notice that this will flip back over to the project panel. It's now at the front and we can see all of those clips have now been imported into our project. If we go to the bottom left corner of the project panel, there are actually three different views here. We have list view, we have icon view, which is the same as thumbnail view, and then there's another view called freeform view, which is kind of like thumbnail view. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly organize this project. Okay, there are two sets of clips here. Let's go back to list view, click on list view. 
and you'll see that most of these clips are named after the scene. So we start with scene 20, take one, scene 20, take two, and so on. And then when they move to a different camera setup, uh, they start to add letters. So 20A, take one, 20A, take two, 20B, take one, 20B, take two, and so on. We're going to put all of these into what's called a bin. It's like a container, kind of like a folder within our project. So we need to create a bin to put these clips into. So there are several ways to do this. Uh, I could go up to File, New, Bin, File, New, Bin. Or if we go to the bottom right corner of the project panel, there's a button down here that looks like a folder. And if you rest your mouse over it, a tooltip will pop up that says New Bin. That's just another way to make a new bin. Go ahead and click on that. And that's going to add a bin to your project. And it's going to automatically highlight the name, assuming rightfully so that we're probably going to want to change that name. Okay, we're going to call this Scene 20 Clips. Scene 20 Clips. And then I want to take all of these named clips that start with 20 as the name, and I want to move them into that bin. Now we could do that one at a time, which would take forever, but I could just click on a clip, drag and drop it right onto that bin. And that will put it in the bin. Okay, so you can just click on a clip, drag it, drag it over the bin and let go, and that will put it in the bin. Okay, but we're gonna do this to multiple clips. So I'm gonna click on the first clip that's not in the bin, this 20 take three. I'm gonna scroll down find this 20K take one, and I'm gonna shift click on that. That's one way to drag, uh, to select a group of clips. Click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and that's gonna select those two clips and anything in between them. Then you can click on any of the clips and make sure you're clicking on the icon to the left of the name, click, drag, and drop it on that bin and now we've moved all those clips into that bin. Now to the left of the bin is a little, what we call a disclosure arrow, and you can click that to hide and reveal the clips that are in that bin, just by clicking on that little arrow to the left of the bin icon. Okay, now the rest of these clips are simply cutaways uh, for uh, scene 20. You might call them cutaways, you might call them B-roll, but none of these have been named. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a bin for them. So once again, I can either go File, New, Bin, or I can go down to the New Bin button, click that, or you can also go to the empty space in your project panel, right-click, New Bin several different ways to create a bin. Create a new bin, it's gonna once again automatically create a bin, highlight the name, and we're just gonna call this cutaways. Oops, if I could type, cutaways. Then I'm gonna grab these clips down here, I'm gonna click on the first one, shift click on the last one, and then I'm gonna click on any of the icons to the left of the name, drag up to my cutaways bin and release the mouse. And then once again, I can click that little arrow to the left of that to hide and reveal those clips. We're gonna create one more bin to hold our edits, what we call our sequences. So we're gonna create a sequence bin. So once again, I can either click the new bin button right here in the bottom right corner of the project panel I could go File, New, whoops, File, New, Bin. There's a keyboard shortcut over here, Command B. Or I can right click in the empty space in the project panel, New Bin. We're gonna call this sequences, but we're gonna put an underscore in front of the name. So underscore sequences, you can hit return or click off of that. And what that underscore is gonna do is this will keep this bin at the top of the list with the bins in alphabetical order. 
and that'll make your sequences been easy to find. Okay, so we have our project organized. We have our, our clips imported. We have them organized into bins. Now we start to come to a little bit of the artistic part of the editing. The first thing you want to do, especially if you have the time, and hopefully you do, is you want to go through and you want to watch these clips. Okay, you want to watch it. You want to see what you have to work with. This is a very simple two-person dialogue scene. Okay, so as I said, I'm keeping this lesson very simple. Just a lot of back and forth dialogue. And I haven't given you too many clips to worry about. Okay, there are some two shots. There are some close-ups. There are some medium shots. And then there are some other kind of, uh, you know, leading into the scene, getting out of the scene. And then there are, of course, the cutaways. So, to preview a clip, several ways to do this. First of all, if we want to take a look, another way to take a look inside your Scene 20 Clips bin, aside from clicking that little disclosure arrow to the left of it, you can do this. You can double click the bin and that will open it as its own tab in this panel group. Okay, so you'll notice that we've got this Project Scene 20 Dialog panel. That's our project panel. But now I've got this bin scene 20 panel. Okay, so I've opened up this bin in its own panel. And I can go to the bottom left corner here. And once again, I've got list view, icon view, or freeform view. I'm going to click on icon view. Once again, I can click and drag to make these frames larger or smaller. I can also click this little menu right here. There's a sort icons menu, and you can sort them by any of these parameters. I'm going to sort them by name. I'm going to sort them by name just to make sure they're in order by name. And now I'm going to show you a feature that I really like about Premiere Pro. And this is because I do a lot of work, in, work on a laptop, and I really need to conserve my screen real estate. So what I can do is I can go up here to this bin tab where it says bin scene 20 clips and I can double click it. And that'll make that window go full screen. If I wanna go back to regular size, I can go up to the bin tab up here, bin scene 20 clips, and I can double click it and that'll put it back. Okay, so once again, I've gone into icon view. I've made those Frames nice and big, and then I've double clicked on that bean scene, a bin scene 20 clips tab, and that makes it go full screen. And now I can see all of my clips at once. Okay, then I can do this. I can go up to the very first clip here, I can click on it, and once again, I can grab this playhead here in this blue bar and scrub through the clip. But what I can also do is I can drag to the beginning of the clip. And then I can hit my space bar to play it, and I can just watch the clip in this view. Lunch time. Just a minute. No. No. Okay, and then I can go through, and I can just watch each of these clips staying in this view. And then when I'm done, I can go up here, I can double click that tab and put it back in the bottom left corner. Now there is a keyboard shortcut for this. The key all the way on the left side of your keyboard, all the way to the left of the, the number one key is called the tilde key or the grav key. You can tap that key and that will make the active window go full screen. If I hit that same key again, it will go back. Now, what I mean by active window is this blue outline right here. Okay, so there's a blue outline around this window. If that window's active and I hit the tilde key, that window goes full screen. If I hit it again, it goes back. If I were to go up here and click on my source monitor, which right now has nothing in it, but if I click on my source monitor and it's the active window and I hit the tilde key, that window's gonna go full screen. If I hit it again, it will go back. Okay, so that brings me to my next point. 
Another way to watch a clip is to load it into the source monitor. Okay, so I can double click a clip in my bin and that will load it in the source monitor. You can also grab a clip and drag it to the source monitor or you can right click on a clip and choose open in source monitor. I typically double click. So I'm gonna double click this clip. I'm gonna load it into the source monitor. And now I've got this little root, little ruler area right here with this little blue thing that looks like the home plate on a baseball field. That is your playhead. You can grab that and you can scrub through the clip that way. You can also click anywhere in that ruler area and your playhead will jump to where you click. If you want to go to the very beginning of the clip, if you're working with an extended keyboard, you can hit the home key on your keyboard to jump to the head of the clip or the end key to jump to the end of the clip. Home and end. Once again, the space bar will play and pause the clip. So I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm just going to watch a little bit of this clip. Lunchtime. And then once again, I can hit my space bar to pause it. Now, just so you know, we do have transport controls down here. We've got the play button here, so I can always just click on this to play. No. No. And pause the clip. But let me tell you some keyboard shortcuts that are pretty much universal on any editing program. Okay, so once again, the space bar will play and pause the clip. Whether or not you're working in Premiere, Avid, DaVinci Resolve, it will play. and pause the clip, but you can also use your J, K, and L keys to play through a clip. The L will play forward. What is this? Green tea, but I wanted a Coke. K will pause it, and J will play backwards. And once again, K will pause it. So, the more you hit L, the faster it will play forwards. So I can hit L once. What is this? Then I can hit it again. I want a Coke. So that is that the impression? And then again. And then again. The more I hit L, the faster it goes. K will pause it. And then J will play backwards. And the more I hit J, the faster it will play backwards. So J. J again. And again and again, and then once again, K will pause it. So that's J, K, and L. If you hold down K and L at the same time, it will play forward in slow motion. If you hold down K and J at the same time, it will play backwards in slow motion. Okay, so that's J, K, and L, and that will work that way in pretty much any editing program. Okay, so I'm gonna hit L to go forward. I'm gonna hit it a few times to kind of fast forward. And then I'm gonna hit K to pause it. Now, if you want to just step forward one frame at a time, or backwards one frame at a time, there are buttons right here, step forward one frame, step backward one frame, or step back one frame. Okay, you can click those to go forward or backwards one frame at a time. But you can also use your left and right arrow keys. So if I tap on my right arrow, 
It's going to go forward one frame at a time. If I hit my left arrow, it's going to go backwards one frame at a time. So that's your left and right arrow. If we look over here in the bottom left corner of the source monitor, we have the time code field. This is the time code that the camera assigned to every frame of this clip. Think of this as the address for this particular frame of video. And if you've never worked with time code before, we read it this way. Hours, minutes, seconds, frames. Hours, minutes, second frames. So I would read this as 17 hours, one minute, 18 seconds, and zero frames. And every time I hit my right arrow, we can see it's gonna go up one frame at a time. And since this is a 24 frame per second project, when we get up to 23, it moves up to the next second. Okay, so your left and right arrow move backwards and forwards one frame at a time. Okay, now if you do shift and your left and right arrow, it's gonna move forward or back five frames at a time. So that shift right arrow, five frames forward, shift left arrow, five frames backwards. Okay, just different ways to navigate through the clip. Okay, so once again, you're gonna to wanna to go through and you're gonna watch, wanna watch all the clips, all of your media, uh, and you're of course gonna to wanna to go read the script before you even start your edit. So once again, if I hide Premiere Pro and take a look at this downloaded media in the scene 20 clips that hopefully you've uh, downloaded, if we scroll down, there's also a PDF of the script. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to open that up, read it, it's only about four pages, and just get familiar with the material. Okay, so at this point, if I were you, I would uh, pause this video, read the script, watch at least a few of the clips, and then when you feel like you know the material pretty well, go ahead and uh, start the video back up.